Food, water, and energy are inextricably linked. And in the year 2050, it's estimated that the population will be 9 billion people. We must manage our uh, resources smarter and much more efficiently if we're gonna feed a growing, po growing population. My name is Robert Colangelo. I'm founding farmer at GreenSense Farms. And I wanna invite you to take a journey with me into the future. So close your eyes for a second and bear with me. I want you to imagine that cities now run on a basket of renewable energies, uh, which have replaced coal burning right and power plants, allowing us to breathe clean air free of pollutants. Electric driverless cars share complete streets with bicycles and pedestrians, reducing congestion and conserving energy. Bioswales replace pipes with plants, reducing runoff and filtering water, making cities greener. Vegetables are grown locally in stacking hydroponic towers 24-7 and harvested 365 days a year. Open your eyes because tomorrow's future is here today. GreenSense Farms is the largest indoor vertical farm. We grow in stacking hydroponic tubs. Our towers range between 10 and 14 levels and they're 24 feet tall. And we grow primarily basil, leafy greens and microgreens in this room. Our advent is being able to take field farming up so that you can grow in multiple levels, which gives you a much higher yield per square foot. So the concept's easy, the practice is hard. Uh, we have created a controlled indoor environment. When you walk in this room, we control everything. The temperature, the humidity, we keep bugs out, we keep plants in. Uh, we give them just the right amount of light. We give them the right amount of nutrients and the right amount of water. Therefore, they'll grow perfectly and consistently year round, allowing us to harvest 365 days a year. I think our biggest competitive advantage is not our pink lights and ability to grow inside, but it's our ability to put these farms at distribution centers. Grow all day, harvest at night, have it in the truck in the morning, and it can be at the store within hours, making it fresh and more nutritious. Our farm is in a 30,000 square foot warehouse. These grow chambers are each 100,000 cubic feet each. We grow in these 105 cell trays and you can see how tightly packed our produce is. When you go out in a field farm, they're anywhere from six to 12 to 18 inches apart. So we get much higher density in our trays. We also go up, which a field farm is just flat and we harvest 26 times a year. So our density is much more efficient. Our lights go on and off by a timer. Our watering cycles and our fertigation is all done through a computer. And we have uh, records of our temperature and our humidity. So we're constantly graphing and charting our data and looking how to improve conditions and keep them more consistent. So data plays a very important role. We're very new, we're only a year old. If you talk to me in two or three more years, I'll have very good historic uh, growing data and I will have historic financial data. We've just signed a contract with China to build uh, 20 farms, and uh, we will be looking at building a network of farms in China. I'm a, uh, a practical environmentalist. Uh, the common language everybody speaks is money and finance, and for good green ideas to work, they have to make economic and common sense. This is a technology that can use a lot less water, a lot less land, and have a lot higher productivity. My favorite part of the job is working with chefs and bringing people through the farm and having them eat fresh produce right out of the tubs. Uh, it's the smile on their face and it's the amazement when they see the pink lights and they want to be part of what we do. That makes me really happy. This area means a lot to me. My grandfather came from Italy. He settled in the old neighborhood there on Taylor Street and they worked very hard. Uh, so being the son and grandson of an immigrant, uh, food was very important to us, and uh, it wouldn't be uncommon for my mother to take us around when we were young to find the best ingredients for a dish, and the best meant the freshest. Um, in my career, I've had three guiding principles that shaped me. You know, one was take on projects that made the world a better place. Two, I had to make a living doing it because I have a family. And three, I had to have fun and be passionate about it. Uh, about six years ago, I started GreenSense Radio. We're now uh, nationally syndicated coast to coast, uh, 37 stations. 
And we focus on uh, finding entrepreneurs, uh, kindred spirits like myself, that are changing the world with their ideas and innovations. So I hope maybe I'll find some people here to interview. And if you uh, listened to WBBM about 20 minutes ago, you would have heard our Green Sense Minute. As it said in the video, I'm a practical environmentalist. When we started Green Sense Farms, our goal was to build a profitable company. And just as you need two feet to step, our second step was sustainability. Uh, I've learned a long time ago from interviewing over 500 people on the radio show, for it to make Green Sense, it's got to make common sense and economic sense. The best way we can feed the world is by taking a new technology and making it uh, uh, viable and uh, both economically and technologically. And over time, it'll get better and cheaper. So if you look at current food distribution, you see that it takes days to get from farm to the table. And there's many steps that food travels. And every time produce goes through that step, if the temperature changes, it reduces its nutritional value and its freshness. And as soon as it's cut, it loses its nutritional value. What we've done to disrupt produce distribution and transform farming is we're able to build these farms under, in a small footprint that are high yield, that can grow 24-7 and be harvested 365 days a year. And we can now get produce distribution down to ours. Because we can grow at the point of consumption or distribution going from the farm to the table in hours. And that, to me, is revolutionary, and that's a game changer. So our goal right now is to build a brand that's nationally known and locally grown by building a network of these farms throughout the US, China, Canada, and Scandinavia. And we're putting these farms at the point of distribution and at the point of consumption. So point of consumption means schools, hospitals, corporate campuses, and military bases. We're able to do this because we formed partnerships with great companies. Uh, we're only two years old and we're expanding very rapidly. But we were able to go to big companies, many of them Dutch. The Dutch are the leaders in indoor growing. And uh, they've liked what we've done. And now we're in a position to move very rapidly throughout the world. Our next venture is uh, cutting strategic alliances with a solar company so that we can get off the grid and uh, run our farm off geothermal and solar. We locate these farms based on key drivers. The first is we look for large, dense population centers. As I said, we're here to do this profitably. So we're not here to solve and, and serve the masses, but we want that tip of the food pyramid. People that will pay a premium price for high quality, fresh produce that's pesticide, herbicide, and GMO free. We also look at cold climates with short growing seasons because then food has to travel long distances. So we could disrupt that distribution by putting these uh, close to that point of consumption. And then lastly, we look at resource constrained markets, either land, water, or pollution. And that's one of the reasons we're in China. They've chewed up a lot of their farmland uh, with their industrialization over the last 25 years, and they have a growing population. China is a hard place to neglect when it comes to food. They have 1.4 billion people. Uh, if you just take 10% of that, uh, uh, you know, that's 140 million people. That, that's, a, that's almost half the U.S. population. Um, each of these cities is where we're building networks of farms. Uh, we're looking at 20 farms per circle. Um, our first farm is under construction. It's in the Sunjen area, right across from Hong Kong. We broke ground in uh, uh, December. Uh, we should be turning that farm on in June. And in a 50-mile radius, there is 48 million people. That's larger than the size of Canada. Again, China has a huge high-dense uh, uh, issues, and they have lots of congestion. Um, this is the uh, facility we're in. Uh, it's an old textile mill. Um, it, uh, my past, I developed brownfields, contaminated properties. And when I was shown this site, it sure brought some memories back. It was an old factory. You could see the first picture on the top there. Uh, it was uh, pretty rough, but I was amazed at what the Chinese can do to ready these. And being a textile mill, it was pretty benign chemically. Uh, and so uh, the status of the farm right now is we've done the outside of the building. We've put our grow towers in, and we've put our racking. And the plumbing, fertigation, and HVAC systems just went in a few days ago. 
So we're very excited about our Chinese ventures. We have great partners. And as I said, we are looking to uh, really expand globally. One of the things that we're uh, very excited about is our expansion here in the US. Uh, we've located in Portage, Indiana, because uh, we can service five states from that location. We're at the crossroads of America, Interstate 65 and 94. We could hit 80% of the US population in a one day drive. And depending on how you classify locally grown, uh, whether uh, some customers classify it by being grown in that state or an adjacent state, we, we can hit five states uh, pretty quickly. Um, our expansion plans in the US are to blanket the Midwest, Northeast, and Eastern Canada. Um, our first farm was put in Portage, where that star is, because of the uh, access to transportation. Our next farm is being built in South Bend, Indiana, uh, as part of our a point of uh, consumption. We'll be serving Notre Dame University, uh, Memorial Hospital, and a small 26-store chain, Martins. So that, that farm is pre-sold even before it's built. Um, one of the things we've noticed out there is that uh, there's real challenges in agricultural uh, uh, education these days. The, the big ag business really controls a lot of the research funding that goes into agriculture. A lot of those dollars go to corn and cattle. And so it starves a lot of these new growing technologies like we're developing. And we see farming stratifying, much like the automobile. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, automobiles ran off gasoline. Now you see them running off of hydrogen, diesel. You get high mile per gallon gas cars. You have plug-in electrics. You have hybrid electric. Same thing's happening in farming. Farming is no longer just a field farm. You're seeing greenhouses. Uh, uh, field farms grow great commodity crops, like soybean, wheat, corn. Greenhouses grow great uh, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. We think we're the next pillar of excellence in being able to grow leafy greens indoors. And, and there's a shortage of people that know how to grow the way we do. And as I said, a lot of that research money is going to uh, the, the traditional agribusiness. So we've also seen that college enrollment is uh, declining for the ag sector. It's not sexy. It's looked at as low pay, hard work, long hours. And the cost of college is crippling. It, it leaves people uh, saddled with debt. So we've come up with a solution. And that's the Earn to Learn Training Center. And that's the center that we've built in partnership with Ivy Tech Community College. And the idea is to pay uh, students to learn to work at this farm, have them uh, graduate job ready uh, for the food services and the agribusiness. Um, there's, there's much needed job ready graduates there and, and uh, the students need a way to support themselves as they go through school. So we're very excited about this program. We just launched it and we have three other universities around the country that we're working with on this idea. And we just came up with the idea to use crowdfunding to sell a percentage of the equity to the community so this farm becomes very community based. Um, this is a picture of the uh, renderings of the farm. Uh, we hope to break ground uh, next month in June. Um, it uh, will be a, a frame fabric building attached to the university. Uh, those are our grow rooms and our operations. It will also have a viewing corridor. One of the way we keep bugs out is we have an integrated pest management strategy that uh, controls access to our farm. Uh, so by having that viewing corridor, we can run tours and let people uh, see how we grow with this new technology. So it'll be a place for employment. It will be a place for education and outreach. And it will, again, uh, create much needed uh, jobs for the food service and ag industry. Uh, we're big on outreach and we're big on sustainability. Uh, we recently created a course with Indiana University called The Art of Sustainability. We uh, worked with the uh, professor to look at five milestones in food, uh, how cities formed around ancient Egyptian grain centers to growing food out in space. And the students researched these topics and they looked at energy, water, and transportation and how they changed over time. 
uh, uh, cities were very sustainable back in Egy ancient Egyptian times. The, the cities were close to the grain. It didn't have to travel far. As technologies came, we've gotten far away from farming. And we worked with an artist. We took those concepts and we painted it on a mural. And now we run this class once a year. And uh, each one of our farms will have a mural with a different theme all around sustainability and farming. Um, I was uh, invited two weeks ago uh, to an XPRIZE visioning se session. I think XPRIZE is just a wonderful organization. Uh, you may know them from SpaceX. Uh, their, their goal is to create audacious competitions that change humanity. And our challenge was to come up with a prize for food. And what was most remarkable was at this event, there was 20 of us from around the world to look at how to come up with a food competition to solve world hunger, but there was a woman artist that took all our concepts and she put these in these uh, murals real time as we were talking. And that, that's, that's what we have up here. So I am amazed at the creative and passionate people that I get to work with. Um, I really am optimistic about the future, that the future I talked to you about at the beginning is a future we're gonna be living very shortly. And I could not be out here with the support of lots of people. We have great customers. We have very uh, uh, passionate investors. I have great partners. And we have a great management team um, that really supports everything we do. So I, I really appreciate uh, you giving me an opportunity to uh, be here. Um, uh, I close every radio show with when you're green, you grow. What I'd like to add here is when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. Keep innovating and stay fresh. And thank you for that time. <laughs>